In today's video, we talk about how long you should rest between sets. What's going on guys? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today's video is going to be specifically about when you're in the gym, how long should you take between your sets to ensure that you get the most out of your workouts. Now, this question can sound very basic. So I can say to you, you should rest 60 seconds between your set of curls, right? To get the most out of it. But it's actually quite a dynamic topic because we all have different goals, right? So there's a big difference between training for the ultimate goal of putting on more muscle or ultimate performance. There's also a difference when we're talking about training within a time constraint, right? So what's optimal for building muscle or getting strong might not be realistic for what your life allows and what your schedule allows. So when you're designing a program, for a person to use, you have to be able to consider how much time they're going to be able to spend in the gym. So let me talk about my recommendations for someone that's in the gym and they have a time constraint and their goal is to get the best workout possible, get the most strength out of it. What I really like to do in this situation, I'm a big proponent of undulating periodization or non-linear periodization where you're in a situation where every time you train, you're kind of training in a different rep range, different intensities. The most common bodybuilder style, muscle building style of reps is between eight and 12 reps, right? And so we can kind of all agree that between eight and 12 reps is where you get the most hypertrophy. The biggest determinant for building muscle the, the, the variable most closely associated with that was total training volume. So what I really like to do is set a person up between eight and 12 reps on their bigger movements. So let's say it's back day, right? I'm gonna have them do between eight and 12 reps on a rowing movement, okay? What I would like them to do is rest between 60 and 90 seconds and use about 70 to 80% of their one rep max intensity. That way they can train get close to that rep, that rep range, feel like they're almost to failure, but not quite, rest for 90 seconds, feel refreshed, and go again. Now, there's another caveat to that. If we're really time constrained, we can do what's called a push-pull routine, or we can train another muscle between that 90 seconds. Now, this comes down to you know the facility that you train at and the availability. Some gyms are just too busy to do this, but for myself, what I would, what I would generally do is I would use a, an, a muscle that does not impact my training the back. So if I'm doing a back movement, right, and I have that 90 seconds to kill, I would either go over and do some tricep work, or I would do some shrug work, or I would do some calf work, right? An accessory movement, I always choose movements, and I feel it's the best way to do this, that the muscle group is much smaller than the primary, right? So if we're training quads or hamstrings, we can use calves as the accessory work. If we're training back, now some people will do a push-pull, right, where they'll do back and buys. Now I won't do a bicep movement in between my back movements just because the biceps, no matter how much you try to remove them, are still involved. And I don't want to kind of make the bicep training secondary. So what I like to do is like a push-pull with opposing muscle groups. So I will set it up sometimes where I'm doing a back movement with a tricep because they will not impact each other, right? Now the only thing you have to worry about there is if you're doing 90 seconds in between and you're kind of going back and forth is as fatigue builds up, you might need to rest a little bit longer because the most important variable for building muscle is the total training volume, right? Intensity is also very important. So let's talk about the next training variable. Let's say you live in this world where time in the gym does not matter. The only thing that matters to you is making progress, getting stronger, and building muscle. How much time should you rest between sets? Well, the more intense you train, the closer you train to your one rep max, your rest is gonna be longer. So I've actually done a program where I would rest between 10 and 15 minutes each set. That sounds crazy, right? Yes, I would be in the gym for almost two hours, including warm-up, for 10 sets. 
Now, this was a very intense squat program called Smolov, and this was day four of the program where we had to do 10 sets of three. Now, 10 sets of three doesn't sound that bad, but it was like 90% of your one rep max. And it was the fourth day squatting in a seven day period. So you had accumulated fatigue, so it took a while to warm up, and you had accumulated a lot of soreness, and by the time you got to that day, literally each rep felt like a one rep max. The only reason I got through it was because I knew I could do it. It was literally like, okay, if I got the first set, I'm just gonna rest long enough till I get the next set. The Smolov squat program is a crazy example of daily undulating periodization because each day that you train in that, that base meso cycle is a huge difference, right? You go from sets of nine at the beginning of the week to sets of three, and um, you know as the, the intensity goes up, the reps go down, and so you're just basically training in different rep patterns throughout the week. And earlier in the week, I felt like I could rest like three to four minutes between sets and do good. Later in the week, it was up, like I said, 10 to 15 minutes. And for those of you that are familiar with Lane Norton, you know, I watched him train for the world championships of the IPF two years ago. And uh, he was routinely in the gym for three, four hours for his squat bench deadlift training. And while that may sound crazy, when you're training, to be an elite athlete, these are things you need to consider. For the most of us, what we're looking to do is get the most bang for our buck in our workouts. And so, I usually recommend about 90 seconds. Now, what do I personally do? If I'm gonna go heavy, if I'm gonna go closer to the five rep mark, I will rest three to five minutes. And I'm gonna link a meta, meta analysis below that you can kind of see where they kind of found that the best rep rest, the best rest between training sets for making progress was about three to five minutes. And for most of us, if you, if you do a really heavy set and you set your watch, you'll notice that after a minute, you don't quite feel right. After two to three minutes, you start to feel good. Then as you accumulate fatigue throughout the session, you might need four or five minutes. So like yesterday, I did a, a day of um, five rep incline dumbbell pressing and I got up to my best five rep set and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go up because I was able to get it and I got to the point where I could only do three reps on the, on the next weight. But I'd also waited about five minutes, walked around, got a drink. Now, because I was doing chest, I was also doing some biceps in between. So I wasn't just sitting around doing nothing. Uh, I like to make the most of my time in the gym and actually get a couple things done, multiple things done. Because as I've been training for years and years, I've built up a level of you know volume and frequency that for me to continue to progress, I have to get kind of creative. If you're just starting out with training, you know, and you don't need that much volume and frequency to progress, I don't feel like you need to kind of superset everything. So again, these are just things you need to consider. But so take into consideration how much time you're gonna be in the gym or how much time your client is gonna be in the gym Take into consideration their goals. If I'm training a client that's going to compete at a national level powerlifting meet and I give them their program, if it takes them three hours to complete a squat bench and deadlift day, you know, that's kind of the price of admission. If someone tells me they don't have time to do that, we'll change the variables, we'll do the best we can. But when you're talking optimal, best situation possible, you might have some longer training variables. When you're talking about building muscle with the shortest amount of time possible, you know, 60 to 90 seconds can allow you to recover, but I wouldn't recommend training at a very high intensity if you want to recover in a shorter amount of time. The higher the intensity, the longer it's going to take you to recover between sets. And you want to recover between sets because you don't want to get hurt because you're fatigued either mentally or physiologically, right? So when you're mentally fatigued, you know, you could make a simple mistake, rush the process. You know, when you're talking about squat bench and deadlifts, talking about some, some skills that we need to do that require our focus. That's one of the things I, I remember most about that small love program was, you know, remembering my cues, you get really good at the psychological aspect of paying attention and getting good at the movements because you repeat them under high stress for so long. So that's it guys. When we're talking about rest between sets, take into consideration what your goal is. Is it time in the gym? And also take into consideration, you maybe need to stop talking to people. Maybe you need to put your headphones in or whatever it may be to kind of hold yourself accountable. A good training partner is great. You know, the one thing I love about like training with like someone with like Doug Miller, like whenever we train together, we literally just 
put the weight on, do a set, I do a set, he goes, you know. I don't have a training partner like that right now, but I kind of keep that in my mind that I'm gonna be training with Doug in the future, and he's a great training partner, um, you know, even when he's not around, because I kind of know in my mind that's the intensity that he keeps, and I really admire that. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of always, even when I'm in the gym alone, kind of trying to keep my own pace. That's something you should do um, if you want to get the most out of your workouts. I know it can be very easy to kind of find a social situation and be talking, but get into the groove of your workouts, get them consistent, figure out your timing that works best for you, and remember the most important thing is that you're recovered for your next set and that you can go at it all out. It's not always just about getting the most in. I find the best workouts I have are when I give myself just enough rest and then I go, okay? Now, if you want to change up your variables every now and then, yeah, you can do some stuff where you do like a one minute rest, 10 sets of 10, some German volume. You know, there are some uh, research that show those can be beneficial as well. Changing up, you know, rest periods, changing up intensities. These are all the kind of variables that we have to design training programs around. We can talk about that more in the future. But for today's video, guys, rest between sets under a minute, up to 15 minutes, but it has to be based on what your training goals are and what your schedule allows. All right, guys, have a great Saturday, and I'll talk to you next week.